Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? A friend of ours from Chicago sent me an email a couple of months ago and inside the email was a photo of a wooden musical instrument. I had no idea what it was and when I asked her she didn't know what it was called either. So with a little bit of internet research I discovered that it's called a tongue drum or sometimes it's called an African slit drum. So what I want to do is make a couple of these and the reason I want to make more than one is I want to experiment a little bit with different tone woods to see how they react. Uh, so the first one I'm going to make with bird's eye maple for the sound box and some paduk for the tongues or the, or the top portion. For the second tongue drum I'm going to use Spanish cedar for the sound box and for the tongues for the top portion I'm going to use coco bolo. So it'll be interesting to compare the two different tongue drums. I know I've got more than one variable changing at the same time so it won't be easy to compare and to know what is causing the change but at least it will provide me with some guidance and I can use that as I go about making additional ones, which I hope to be able to do. So let's get started. So I've milled this bird's eye maple. It's not a clear bird's eye maple. It has this brown uh, color through it, which looks really cool for a box. I've milled it down to a half inch thick and it's about four and a half inches wide and I think that'll be perfect. I didn't want to make it too thick because I think the thinner the material, the more it will vibrate and, and resonate, which will be good for the sound box. I set up the box joint jig. Um, it was a little bit tight on my first test cut, so I loosened it up a little bit, and now it's tight enough, but loose enough that I can still move it around and adjust it as I'm assembling the box. Before cutting the box joints, I'm laying out the pieces to make sure that I have proper grain alignment and that all the pieces are oriented properly. After I do that, I will mark the top edge of each piece, and that's important because I need to make sure that I have everything oriented properly in the box joint jig. Here I'm setting up the Ankara eye box jig, and I'm just sliding a piece of wood across the top so that it catches onto the tooth and that gives me the proper height. And then with the mark that I had for the top edge, I have that pointing toward the center of the jig. Every piece that you use is always having that same orientation. Now to position the adjoining piece, I'm flipping the current piece over with the top mark facing toward the center again and I butt the two top marks up together and that gives me the starting point for the adjoining piece. And then I'll just run this through multiple times, moving it over each time to cut the next slot. Before I start putting the boxes together, I need to glue up the coco bolo to have it ready for the top. And coco bolo is kind of an oily material, an oily wood, and it presents difficulties when trying to glue it up with regular wood glue. So what I'm going to do in this case is first I'm going to wipe it down with acetone to remove any of the oily substance, and then I'm going to use a polyurethane glue instead of a regular wood glue. That will help to have a stronger bond without having to worry about the wood glue being absorbed into the pores of the wood. Polyurethane glue is activated by moisture, so it's important to put a little bit of water on the edge before, before gluing. And now I'm just wiping up the excess. And back at the box, I'm applying glue to the box joint. It's a pretty tight fit, so I'm going to tap the boards in place. and then I'll check to make sure that it's square and then clamp it and let it sit overnight. After the glue has dried, I'll just clean up the excess on the belt end. Now I'm preparing the cedar box and for this box I'm going to use just a simple miter joint. So after applying all the glue, I'll tape the pieces together. That makes it really easy to assemble. 
I'll use a band clamp just to apply sufficient pressure. And again, I'm checking it to make sure that it's square. Now I'm cutting the bottom for the cedar box. This is another piece of Spanish cedar and I'm cutting a bevel and then I'm using my dado blade to cut a rabbit so that it can be inserted. And now I'm cutting a rabbit around all four sides of the top. For the coco bolo top, I'm just hand scraping it with a card scraper just to remove the excess glue and then I'll run it through the drum sander. And then back at the table saw, I cut a rabbit in the top around all four sides and it fits very nicely. And now I'm making some mallets for the tongue drums and I'm simply using a super, super ball and drilling a hole that I can insert a piece of dowel into. And then with a little bit of epoxy, I can make sure that the dowel is securely fastened. And now I'm just going to draw a layout of where I want to position the tongues. I'm using a white pencil to make it easy to see the marks so that when I come along with my jigsaw, it will be pretty easy to see the marks. And it's pretty much just hand drawn using a circle template and a ruler and a little bit of freehand. I was really just making this up as I went along. I think if I was going to do this again, I would probably calculate the sizes of the tongues that I wanted to have to approximate the pitch that I wanted to arrive at. Now I'm drilling a 5 16 inch hole so that I can get my jigsaw blade inserted. And now it's just a matter of carefully cutting along the lines. It's not that difficult to do, you just need to be careful so that you stay relatively close to the line. And now I'm gluing in the top. It actually would have been easier to cut the tongues if the top had already been glued in so that it didn't move around as much. But it was too risky for me because I thought if I made a mistake, there would be no turning back. So I wanted to cut them first and then glue it in. Now with the cedar box, because I have just a simple miter joint, I'm going to cut splines, two splines in each corner to add a little bit of strength and also to add a bit of a design element. Since the top of this box is made from coco bolo, um, I don't have any extra left, but I can use walnut splines to get a color that's pretty close to the coco bolo. And now I'll glue in the splines and the top for this box as well. I'll clamp it up and let it sit overnight. And then the next morning I can cut off the excess parts of the splines with a flush cut saw. And then I can pretty quickly clean those up on the drum sander. The way you tune the tongues is by removing wood from the underside. If you want to raise the pitch, you remove wood from the tip that's near the center, and if you want to lower the pitch, then you remove it from the other end. And here I've downloaded an app, um, a free app that can be used for tuning. And for this first tongue, I want to lower the pitch. I'm not really sure how much to remove, so I'm proceeding pretty cautiously. I'm using a 5 8 Forstner bit and removing just a little bit so that I can test it and see how much it varied the pitch. And it did vary it a little bit, but not quite enough, so I have to go back and do it again. And then I moved on to the next tongue. Um, this was a fairly tedious process. It took me a couple of hours to tune the box. And for this one, I tuned it to an A minor pentatonic scale. 
now I'm just giving it a little bit of a test run. It doesn't sound very good yet, and that's because I don't have the bottom glued in. It's, it's surprising actually how much of a difference it makes to have the bottom glued in rather than just sitting loosely in there. But at least I can hear how the notes sound relative to one another. So everything is glued up and I'll let it sit overnight. And now I'm applying a coat, just a single coat of de-waxed shellac to seal all the pores in the wood. And then I'll lightly sand it with some 320 grit sandpaper, just very lightly to remove any rough spots. And it's really worth it to spend the time to do this. It doesn't take that long. It's not that much effort, but it really pays off. And next I'm applying a coat of spray lacquer. This is a spray lacquer with a satin finish. And it only takes about 30 minutes to dry each coat, so I'm applying five coats to the boxes. So the boxes are done, and I think they've turned out pretty nice. Um, I'll just point out a few things. One is I drilled holes, two holes, in one end of each of the boxes so that I can store the mallets easily. Um, I think this one is particularly nice because of the maple and the, and the grain in the maple. Um, I managed, with some careful planning, I managed to get a continuous grain all the way around the entire box. It's not usually that hard to get three corners continuous, but to get all four corners continuous is kind of nice. Um, so let's listen to the differences in the sounds between the two boxes. So apart from different tuning on the Coco Bolo box, um, it has a different sound characteristic. I can't really describe it. I'm not very technical with sound terminology. But it definitely sounds different. I can't say that I prefer one over the other, but they are different. One thing I will say about the Coco Bolo is that it was very difficult to tune. I was only, be, I was only able to change the pitch by about a half a tone, like from an A flat to a G or something like that. Whereas with the Paduke, I was able to change a D all the way up to a G. So like three, three tones or something like that. So um, much easier to tune the Paduke. And I think what I would do the next time I make one of these in both cases is I would pay more attention to the lengths and the widths of the tongues and try to plan those so that they're already sized to give me the note that I want. Of course, it won't be perfect. And then I can do some fine tuning rather than trying to have to change a note all the way from a C to an F or you know a big change like that. But I'm very happy with these. So let's let the kids give it a try. So I gotta ask, would you make it?